Hi friends, Judy here from an Aussie and a Kiwi world on Monday the 18th of March 2024. I am a few weeks late, um, quite a few. Um, I've had quite a bit of stuff going on in the last um, the month or so, so I've got quite a bit to say um, and to bring you up to speed with what's been happening in my world. So first of all, I'd just like to actually thank all my subscribers that come back um, each time I post a video. I do appreciate the fact that you keep following um, and hopefully you enjoy what I have to show. And to all the new subscribers, which I've had quite a few since the last video, um, thank you very much for coming along. If this is the first time you've actually been here, then please um, sit down, grab a drink, and hopefully you enjoy what I have to say or what I have to show with my stitching. So this is definitely a channel about stitching. I do throw some life things in at the very end, so and I will give you a warning when that's going to happen. So if you do want to actually... Um, jump out at any time um, when there's life event life updates feel free to do that I um, I don't mind um, if you don't want to hang around for that so um, I don't mind them when I watch floss tubes but I know some people do actually prefer to have just for stitching and no life updates so let me um, give you a little bit of a rundown of what I've got to show you so I've got quite a bit of haul I've been to a retreat uh, last weekend so I've got a little bit of things that I bought from there. My husband's been over to Australia. Um, I sent him over for a relaxation holiday, and I think I mentioned that last time in my video. Um, so I'll give you an update about that later on. Um, but he did pick up some lots of haul for me that I'd sent to Australia, um, or purchased from an Australian D-Stash site. Um, I've got a fair bit of stitching that I've worked on. I think there is about maybe nine or ten charts that I've been working on or focusing on and yeah it's let's just throw it all in there and see how it goes so it might be a bit of a mishmash um, but at the end of the day it's all about my stitching and and what's been going on so okay since the last time I seen you I have um, I've actually had February whip go called and I've also now had March called so that's two lots of um, whip go and I will what I'll do is I will just show some of my pieces which is my focus piece which is Adele from Tilt and Crafts is actually in my every month so that will actually show and I'll show that pretty much near the end of my stitching. So I have quite a bit of stuff around me, so I've got some projects sort of here and some down on that ch chair and some goodies here. So it's all over the place, unfortunately, um, but I'll see if I can do it without making you dizzy. So grab a cup of tea, a drink, um, a bowl of popcorn if you need to, um, and sit back and relax. And hopefully I've got some interesting things for you to um, see. So... What I will do is I'll start with um, my project so that I can um, see show you my progress of that and then I'll move on to my haul, talk about the retreat a little bit and get into my plans and my um, my life update. So hopefully everything will all fit in, fit in quite nicely. So first of all, last month, uh, one of my... Whip go calls was to work on the 2022 Fox and Rabbit. Sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. Fox and Rabbit Changing Season Cell. Now this is obviously a couple of years old, but I've I I like to collect all the pieces of the cells each month, and then when I've got the whole piece, then I will start the project. Um, only because I don't want to collect a couple and start it, and then find out that I'm not actually really interested in it, and then I've wasted fabric time floss all of that so the first one was um the changing seasons as i mentioned and if you're not sure of what that looks like this is what it looks like so i'm a middle starter normally so i've started in the middle here and that is i just think these these fox and rabbit patterns or the mystery cells 
um, when they transferred from linen and threads to fox and rabbit, you don't actually really see much of a transition going forward. Like sometimes people change their name or whatever and they, you can see a real big difference from when they've gone from one company name to another because they want to take on a whole new sort of way of um, with their patterns and designing. But I think fox and rabbit have just been the same all the way through and I do love their patterns. So this is the 2022 Changing Seasons. I've said that about five times now. Hopefully I'm not going to repeat myself right throughout the um, throughout the video. So I'm doing this in DMC 919 and Ecru, which are just these two colours. It's, a, it's quite a rusty brown. And I'm doing it on just a 10 Ada, an 18 count. So I'm going to do all the borders in the brown and then have the rest of it done in the Ecru. Now I was a bit hesitant when I first started this. I didn't know what it was going to look like. But I'm actually really happy with the way that it's come out. Let's see if I can move that forward a little bit. So I think those colours actually do look really nice on this fabric. And I'm actually looking forward to getting into the next section. So this one was called for... 506 stitches and I ended up getting I ended up getting 1200 stitches in so doubled my target and it was actually really hard to put down to be honest so I really like this one okay that's the first one The next one was a Gecko Rouge kit. Now this was called Frog and it's from Lorna Lane. If you don't know what that is, this is what it looks like. This was a new start and my goal was to get 2024 stitches in. So for those that have actually been following me for a little while, you know that I like to start with black and do all the black as much as I can before I continue on and fill in the colours. So that's what I've done with this one. Now excuse me while I bend down, I'm just going to grab this piece of cardboard. See if I can set it behind. Now this is actually quite a decent sized piece of fabric. It's an 18 count fabric that come in the kit. And oops. And this is what it looks like so far. So I've done quite a bit of black. Um, I've got 2,272 stitches in there. Now I probably, I probably stitched about 4,000 stitches on this because I tried to do all the outline I was filling in all the black as I went and I got down I got up to here and I'd stitch this part of the head and up on the hand here come down and as I got down here it didn't actually line up so I had to try to backtrack to where I'd made the mistake and of course I made the mistake all the way around here by just giving it an extra couple of stitches so I had to undo all of this and right the way back down to here and start again but I really love this how the size of it it comes with a beautiful needle minder in the kit which is of the of the pattern and unfortunately this is going to go away now until I feel like pulling it out again um, it has had its goal of 20, 2024 stitches in it which is what my whip go board is trying to get me to do is 2024 in each of my projects that I've chosen for the focus 24 um, I hope I do actually get to bring that out again part time through the year because it was actually a really fun a fun project project to work on um, the next project I needed to work on was my um, where is it oh I don't think I have it here actually. 
um, which was my Madame Chantilly Celebrate Summer. So that was this one by Madame Chantilly. I actually really love this project. I did start it. I was supposed to get 20, 24 stitches on it. So I got a start and I, there was only, um, I don't know, 300 and something stitches, however many was on here. But that was my start. And on this fabric, I just think that it's too bulky and I don't like the size of the stitches. So I'm actually going to use the same fabric. I just need to undo it. And I'm going to start it again and do a do it one over one on the Ada. It's a 20 count, I believe. 20 count Ada. Um, yeah, I just didn't like it. So I didn't reach my goal in February for that one. But I am going to pull that back out for... Sorry. Um, I'm going to try to pull it back out for when number 13 is called. And use it for... And try to do the 2024 stitches at the, in that month. Okay. So that was a bit of a bust with that one. I wonder how many people actually have start whip go and and go really good for the first couple of months and then all of a sudden start sort of dwindling off what you're going to do with whip go. I can't be the only one surely but um, I don't hear very often about people actually doing it so I don't know whether it's just that they just drop off and don't mention it or whether people keep going and they don't actually have that problem so possibly the latter um, where they don't have that problem. The next one that I got called for my whip go was the Australian Quaker. This one's from Vibsters. This was another new start. And it looks like this. Now there is a New Zealand one as well. And I do have that in my focus group, as, my focus list as well. So this is just the Australian one, which I'm starting with. I'm hoping to actually put them both on the same fabric, which is going to be massive. But we'll see how we go. Maybe that not, might not be the best option. So I'm hoping that I have it the right way. Um, yes, I do. And this is my start. So I got on this one. Oops. Turn the page. I got exactly 1,012 stitches. I remember um, when I, I had to sort of I pull another thread and actually start start stitching which is why just to make up the numbers to the 1012 so I could get on to the next project because I think I was really pushing myself to the end of February and I was nearly running out of time and I wanted to make sure I could do all of the projects that were on my whip goes so for those that are um, new to my channel I do have three whip go boards and the three options are, um, the first one is the Focus the focus whip, whip Go, which is 2,024 stitches on each of the 24 designs. My second one is for stitch alongs. I've got lots and lots of stitch alongs and I do, I do tend to throw myself um, out there to try to start, one, start things with lots of people, but I don't seem to finish before them so I've always got projects that are um, definitely started at the same time but I'm still doing them a few years down the track and everybody else is finished and they've got 20 other projects finished and Judy is still snailing behind because I have so many projects so but that's okay it's always fun to actually stitch along with someone and see someone else's project because it definitely actually brings you um, gives you the incentive to work on yours and that's what happened with one of my other ones which I'll explain later on so um, after the Australian flag the next one was Animal Panorama this was for 1,012 stitches um, and I'm stitching this one with Danielle from um, Danielle the Cardiff Stitcher now this is actually quite a big project it's printed out the pattern and this is how thick it is all the papers um, I do like to print out the paper copy only because if I'm ever stuck and I have no power 
I need to actually have the the project to be able to keep continue working on it on it. So okay, so this one, if you haven't seen it before, it's by Adrian Chesterman and chartered by Pain Free Crafts. So I believe I started in the middle and you won't actually see anything what you won't actually be able to tell what this looks like at the moment because all it is is some black stitches so I've just popped it into the Q-snap and started with whatever wherever I could find my first black stitch and that's where I'll continue so I do actually like seeing the the black stitches on there and then being able to colour in the colours later on. Um, now last month I did uh, I did some work on my stitching goddess and I'm not sure whether this was the last picture or not, um, the last place where I was. So I'll pop the video, I'll pop the picture up here of where I was last time and if it's changed I will, um, if the picture's changed, I will pop a copy up here of what it was last time. If it hasn't changed, I will cut out this piece. So if you're actually still seeing this piece, then obviously I've actually stitched some on it. So this is the Stitching Goddess. One that I was, it's from Tiny Modernist, and I was doing this as a stitch along with Creatively. And she has a long time finished hers um, she had hers finished back in November and of course I'm still going so this is my progress so far it's a lovely project to work on this one and this is where I'm up to so I'm just trying to do the outside of the dress so that I can just fill in everywhere it's a good project to take to a stitching day or um, where I can just sit at home if I've got family over that don't mind me stitching um, while they're talking then I can sit here and just stitch along and fill in all the gaps so that is the stitching goddess and it also comes with um, a free pattern which is this one same design just different hairstyle and colour and I've also got the, the one, the bee queen, I think it is as well, which I'm pretty sure I showed on the last video. Okay. So, after that, it was the lost soul was one of my projects that um, I picked for my third, my third band. So, my, I was just, sorry, got sidetracked off, went off a tangent. My third whip go board is just because. So if I feel like stitching on one of my projects, then I just pull any one off the out of all my whips and I have plenty of whips to keep me going. So I just pull one that I feel like actually stitching on. So last month it was, excuse me one second, sorry. Sorry guys, back again. Um, the dogs would not stop barking, so I had to try to stop that. So now they're in with me and they're probably going to start barking again. So... I will show you the noise patrol. Turn around. So these are my puppies. So this is Murphy with the blue collar and their toy poodles cross Laotian. And this is Charlie. As you can see, he's a sticky beak looking out the window. Um, they both like to make lots of noises. Um, but they're fun. They actually keep us busy. Um, they're really, they are normally really good pups, but as small dogs do, they yap quite a bit. So hopefully they don't do that while they're in the room with me now. Um, so moving on from the last of my whip go for February, the just because project that I actually worked on was my Lost Soul Cemetery, which is by um, Autumn Lane Cemetery. Sorry about the zippers. And that's this one. So I did do some stitches on this last month and decided that I was going to bring it out again this month, so for March. So it has been 
pulled out for March and this is where I am starting for March well actually I have filled in this little bit here I can pop a before photo just here I have filled in just a little bit of this blue here to start for, that was this morning early hours of this morning um yeah so it's actually a really fun stitch the ghosts are already stitched in here these three ghosts and I've just got to fill in this bit at the back and there's a big tree up the top here so um, I'm looking forward to getting this as a finish because it's not too far off it's still got quite a bit of stitches but it's easy stitches so that's actually quite fun um, okay so that takes me on to the next month oh sorry one at my focus point my biggest focus um, stitch for the month is Adele um, tilt and crafts but it was also it also come out this month because it's a monthly one that I'm pulling out to finish at the end of the year so I will show that last and give you an update of exactly where I am and how much I've done from last month to this month um so March March we had um my focus pieces were Adele got called for my whip go board number one so that needed to have 2024 stitches plus the 4031 Dreaming of Sunflowers has been called for March, which I haven't actually started on this month. So this is what it looks like by Rosewood Benner. And this is my starting point. I've got it in a, a nice sunflower bag. And this is where I'm starting from. This is a really fun stitch, but when you look at it, you can actually see just how big it is. So I've done that much, which is a decent size. And it is only literally just this section just here. So I've got, whoops, I've got all of this to do. So I have most of the Dreaming of um, range from Rosewood Manor. So that one... I'm pretty sure it's still going to be around in many, many years. It might even still be around in the next leaf year. Um, so, yeah, it's the way that it goes. Okay. Um, sorry about the ums. I'm a little bit out of practice, I feel. So, everybody was talking about the leaf year cell back in, Mar back in February. I didn't start it in February. I started it on the 8th of March and what I've chosen to do is a um, a long dog one that's called Gone to Pieces. Now Gone to Pieces is that the original is actually quite pastel with the colours but I've decided that I changed mine to the pride colours so I'm really excited to actually stitch this. And yes, you are probably thinking the same thing I'm about to say is that I'm going to start with the black and stitch all the black stitches on here. This is my start. It started in the middle. Just using black DMC. And it's a bit of a piddly start. But I have done 199 stitches. So I couldn't even do an extra one stitch to get to 200. It's pretty poor, but a start is a start. So that's the leap cells. I, I'm hoping that I can actually get I can get that done way before the end of the four years. So in relation to long dogs, I actually own quite a lot of them, like 23 maybe. Not that I'm counting. Um, and I've been throwing it out there at the retreat that I might actually start them all before the end of the year so it's not definitely not that I'm going to finish them all by the end of the year or the end of the four years or whenever that is I just love them so much that I'm going to just stitch on try to stitch on them so next year may be a long dog year where I can just keep them all in the rotation and try to stitch on all of them so who knows fake plans real plans things change so um, when I was at the Christchurch retreat, we I had some, a couple of new starts with some friends 
Nicola and Megan. Um, Letitia also had a long dog there to actually stitch on and one that I'm also doing, so that's all cool. But the two that I actually started was Alice in Wonderland's Ori T by Ori TM, which is this one. And I have started in the middle start and I've just stitched just here um, next to the big green, which I don't even actually know what it is. It looks a bit like a blob, but I've started on this little Quaker sideways diamond or triangle thing. I'm pretty hopeless with explaining things. Um, this is just stitched on an, an apricot piece of Ada. And this is my start. Reminds me a bit like Christmas, to be honest. These are all Christmas colours. Gold, green, red. And then this is the piece of the blob that comes with it. Um, now, Megan, who is actually stitching this as well, has changed quite a bit of hers. Um, changed colours, taken out certain things. Um... I'm not that creative. I'm happy just to stitch a calendar as how it comes. So, which is all good for me. The next start was, uh, believe it or not, another Alice in Wonderland. And this one's by Candle and Needle off Etsy. I'm stitching this one with Nicola. And for those that have been following for a little while, you would remember that I'm doing a Mary Poppins, which is very similar to this. Um, I'm doing it in Silks For You and it's on a piece of Stormy Cloud I think by Paddock Lane Designs and the Silks For You is PR147 and this is my start. So this is absolutely beautiful the colours. I love how it's because it's variegated it just shows the different colours everywhere. Um, now I haven't actually been very uniform with my variegation. I literally just grab a piece of floss, pull one off, fold it in half, thread my needle and then stitch. Um, sometimes I stitch the bottom leg and then come back for the top leg. Other times I will do just one cross at a time. It really depends on what the pattern, what where the pattern takes me. So that's the Alice in Wonderland. There are a few different ones that are similar to that. So I think I showed the other two last month, but I've also just found another one yesterday that I went out of my no buying spree and purchased. That is way out the window, that no buying spree. That did not even last, I think, two days when I mentioned it um, in one of my other videos. So, yeah, I'm hopeless, but that's okay. I don't mind. I've got some lovely projects that I can now do because I went outside that band, but it's the way it goes. So, one of my whip goes needed, this is for March, Flea Market Flowers, and I needed 506 stitches. I will pop a photo up here to show you what it was before. And this is now my progress. So I have completed this whole this whole flower here. When I started, you'll see in the before photo, it was just this bottom little bit of blue and a tiny little bit of blue in here. And except for the except for the middle petals on this one, that is all finished. All the bottom of it is all finished. So I love this. It's, the colours are just beautiful. And it's so easy to stitch on. So it's a nice one to work with. Fat quarter shop if anybody hadn't actually um, didn't know who that was from. Now another I had a February uh, sorry a January um, first of January start with Nicola and Megan and Letitia and that was of Strawberry Fields by Blackbird Designs. This is just my paper copy. Um, 
So when I first actually started, when we sat on the video chat I mentioned in my last video, I got a measly 18 stitches and that, all that was was the, one of these chimneys. So the other girls had got quite a chunk in there and I didn't really, I wasn't feeling it. I hadn't even had it kitted up properly when we started on the day and yeah. So just the last couple of days, pretty much over the weekend, I have got... 1473 stitches and this is my progress now the fabric is a piece of I believe paddock lane I think it's paddock lane um, I'm not 100% sure sorry but it's a lovely color it's beautiful it is actually showing a little bit more blue than green that it should be um, but it is a beautiful design and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to love it when it's finished. So, oops. Goes through a little bit of a, everybody stitching on Blackbird designs and then all of a sudden you don't hear of many people doing it and then Floss Tube, it goes off again and everybody's stitching it. Um, I think most people, or a lot of people, have it in their stash. And they're just finding the right time to actually do it. I'm using the DMC um, conversion, not the the cord for threads. Um, but I'm not one to change it up very much, as I mentioned before. So um, the last one, which is my favourite, and this is the Adele piece. Now, this was called for, it's obviously my focus, as I mentioned before, for... Every month I want to get 4,031 stitches in and that's to get me a finish by the end of December. Now this month of March it actually got called as one of my whip goes for 2024. So I had to do um, 6,055 stitches this month. And from last month where it was for the focus piece and this month already, I've stitched, oh, I better show you what it looks like. All right, so it's from Tilt and Crafts, and it is this picture of Adele, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, so last month and this month, I have stitched so far 6,358 stitches. I still have 3,864 stitches to go by the end of March. Um, which won't be too much of a problem because I've got, um, I've only got, I think, 2,000 stitches. Oh, hang on one sec. I've got 2,500 stitches to do for the rest of my whip go goals, and then I've got the 3,864. You might as well say 4,000 on this. So for those that have followed before, I will put a before photo up here, and the majority of it was just black. And then now I've filled in a lot of the gaps on here. But check out this eye. I am so blown away by the detail in this eye. It just looks beautiful. So there's so many different colours in this. There's brown, there's purple, there's grey, there's green, obviously black. In this eye, there's 31 colours in this project. And... I'm pretty sure there is 31 colors in that eye, just in the in this part of the eye. But it is actually making it look amazing. It makes it worth every single stitch to see a project that comes to life like that. And as I was stitching and I could see the brown and the green going in there, I'm like, oh, I hope I'm not going to get to the end of this project and be disappointed because I've loved it the whole time. Um, but now that I've moved on to the eye, I'm pretty excited to definitely have this finished by the end of the year. So I will keep working on that as much as I can to be able to get that done. Every stitch that I can get on it, extra that I will. So, okay, so that is all my stitching um, for the month. And what I didn't do, I was going to actually add up how many stitches I'd actually done for the over that time, but I didn't do that. I'll try to do that next time. Sorry, I've got itchy nose. Um, okay, I don't know why I closed that because I've got some floss tube people that I want to actually mention. 
So let's go into a little bit of haul, which there's quite a bit of. Um, part of it actually come from the retreat. And so my, the retreat that we had here was in Christchurch. And for those that don't know, it's actually in the South Island of New Zealand. I'm actually in the North Island. And it there was probably 80 people, 85 people possibly, um, our retreats here in New Zealand are not as big as what we hear of the States or Canada or over in the UK. Um, they're more of a, they're a smaller, more intimate sort of retreat and they definitely don't cost the cost of what it is over there. Um, I know that there is a comparison with, we don't pay a huge amount for our ticket and we get a, still get a really good goodie bag, um, with the comparison of what the tickets cost over at the in the states or the UK, um, I'm pretty sure your goodie bag and the things that you get throughout the retreat are possibly at a higher standard or a higher amount of money as well. So um, it definitely, obviously, evens out the way that it does cost, the way that it costs, so or how much it costs. So first of all, I'll show you what we got in our goodie bag. So first of all, the God, I'm repeating myself so much today. When we got there, the goodie bags all come with our name and Angel Crafts is um, the lovely lady, Debbie, that actually owns Angel Crafts. This was her retreat. So this it was great that she'd actually itemised it so we actually had our name on there. It wasn't a matter of that we just got handed a bag that had heaps of stuff on it, heaps of stuff in it. It was actually itemised to us. And the reason for that is because throughout the project, throughout the goodies that are in this bag, because I'm an Ada stitcher, then when I got my little retreat kit, it comes with the Ada that I like to actually stitch on, um, which was really cool. So this is actually the retreat piece that we have, which is the it says Christchurch 2024 retreat. Now this was designed by Nicole, who is from North Island Stitcher. And here on Floss Tube. So she designed this. It's actually really, really cute. And seeing at the retreat, there was actually a couple of pieces um, completed, four or five actually. And some were done with beads, some were done with French knots in here, in the flowers and stuff. It was actually really cool. So well done, Nicole, for doing that. It's quite a cool project. We've got a little orc container which is just out of fabric. Now I did actually have a different colour blue, I think mine was. Someone doesn't like purple, so I was happy to swap. I love daisies, and purple is my mum's favourite colour, so it was nice to swap that out. Um, obviously a pen that was says Angel Crafts on there, so when you use it, you'll obviously think of her. A nice little charm that is of an angel. Now these were all different colours. I got a blue one. There's other ones that had red, silver, all different colours. Which was really cute. Let's put it on a bag. Another little one which is a little flower. As you can see I haven't opened any of these. Um, I got back on Monday. But haven't actually really focused on doing anything to do with the goodies out of my bag. Um, a couple of thread or threaders and a thread ship so this is for creating friendship bracelets so it's got all the different kinds of floss in there six strands there's 36 36 um, flosses in there they're all like different colors variegated and yeah so, and I know that everybody got a different kind, not everybody got different, but we all got different kinds um, in relation to when you sort of looked at our tables, all six of us, or there was nine or nine people at the end, but when we were going through the bags, six of us had, not one of us had the same. So it was actually really cool to, to be able to have it so that we had different ones. Um... Sorry about the dogs. My husband's possibly come inside. So let me just see if I can let them out. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, also at the retreat, I purchased this beautiful project bag by... Now I'm 
I apologize if I say her name wrong, but it's either Elena or Elena. Um, e L A E L E N A. Um, so it's just a I love bees, and it's just got Queen Bee written all over the back. And I'm not a real fan of the vinyl front because I know that some people have said that the fabric or the patterns gets sort of inside it gets a little bit damp or whatever and they stick to the vinyl. So I'm just going to make sure that when I put my projects in there they're in a plastic sleeve um, to make sure that doesn't happen. But I just love this. I think it's beautiful. It's really well crafted. And I'm not too sure whether you're going to be able to see it because of the plastic or the vinyl. But it, every now and then these are actually stitched. So she has stitched this on the sewing machine to make it look like it's actually... Let's see if I can... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it, I don't think. But it's actually stitched around to actually give it the indent like it's honeycomb so amazing so I purchased that while I was there I was actually not going to purchase any project bags because I have loads on my shelf um, Judith Livingston actually had loads and loads of beautiful bags and I uh, really tried really hard not to buy one not because I didn't want to but because I have lots and I've got lots of fabric that I really want to use to make my own um, but I couldn't go past that Queen Bee one I thought that was beautiful so we went shopping at a few shops down in Christchurch, ones that I hadn't been and one that I had been before. So one of the places we went was called Hands On and it was all different kinds of crafts. There was wool, there was um, stitching, there was punch needle, there was uh, everything that you could think of was there. So I purchased this beautiful Biscornu, which has got a little frog. It's really cute. Sorry about the glare. And I also purchased some fabric to actually make a, a nice project bag. Now, I did, I have made one project bag before and I've shown that before on my channel. Um, I'm going to have to call on Letitia again to actually ask her if we can have a day where we just stitch some bags. Um, she has mentioned to me that she that it's okay, so I'm happy that that's fine. Um so we will have to do that soon so I can use up some of my fabric so I can make some space in some of my place on my drawers where the fabric sits. Um, I also went to Art and Frame, which is in Christchurch. It's a very well known, um, it's actually a framing store and they have cross stitch as well. So cross stitch patterns, um, they have other like Rendell designs, all that sort of stuff. So I purchased a couple of little kits that they had on sale which are these two, they were like only $10 each, I thought they were quite cute, I could probably stitch them for my grandchildren, and the other one is, I purchased was Forest Laces, um, now this is a DMC RTO kit, RTO kit, and another one that was actually on sale as well, it's black fabric um, with white and grey floss it comes as a kit now I have actually purchased this take it out sorry excuse me for the wrinkles for a second um, so it comes with black ada and it comes with the floss here so as you can see they're just it's black white and grey and I have purchased a denim blue which is hard because it's still in plastic but Hopefully you'll get the picture. It's a denim blue colour of Ada. Um, a 16 count that I will stitch that on instead of stitching it on the black. So one day I'll be brave enough to stitch on black um, with something that I like. And the other pattern that I bought from there was just a Lynn Mennings mini Christmas stockings which is all these little cute stockings, really cute. And the best one that I actually like is this little kiwi at the top here. It's got a little Santa hat on. God, the glare's horrible. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll remember that I said before I actually had a no buy ban on myself so I didn't have to spend any money for as you can see, I've blown that well and truly. 
Um, anyway, you only live once. I keep telling my husband that I'm actually trying to make sure I've got enough for my retirement because when I get retired, when I retire, and we're probably living on the pension, there won't be enough. I won't have enough money to be able to splurge on things that I do now while I've got a good income. So um, I'm just going to go with it. Another store that we went to was Broomfields. First time I'd heard of the place and they are available. They do have, um, you can buy, purchase online. I found this gorgeous red bunny sampler, which is absolutely beautiful. And I just love this little hair down the front here. It's really cute motifs. Now, I'm not too sure I'm going to actually do it in red. I'm thinking that I might do it in purple or teal, a dark teal, but... We'll see what happens when I get around to actually stitching it. It's I've got to get there first. Things take a little while. And I also went on with um, Debbie Angel, who was running the retreat, had her own little store, obviously, at the retreat for a vendor. So I purchased another little Biscornu, which has just got like a little birdcage just here and some flowers. I thought that was really cute. And Silver Creek Samplers, A Sweet Memory, which says, Seems like only yesterday that you were very small and left me f and left for me a memory of handprints on the wall. So I thought this would have actually be really cool. You can change the hand colour to blue or pink. Excuse me, sorry, itchy nose again. Um, a blue or pink hand, if you're that way inclined. Otherwise, happy to do um, in the beige, which would be cool, depending on the fabric you use. And the other one is Live Your Dreams, which says, Live your dreams, risk it all, take the chance, and if you fall, then rise once more. Do not give in. Life is waiting to begin. This is um, quite a cute, cute pattern. I like it when it has words. They seem to go a little bit faster. Okay, now before the retreat, I... For those that know, I, I've been trying to actually find a, a suitable way to actually store my floss. Now, I did actually make lots of floss drops like this, just out of cardboard. Put the hole in myself with a hole punch um, and thought that was going to be the best way forward. Now, the hardest part is, is actually having to worry about or putting the numbers on or holding, somehow having the numbers. So... Jessica from Stitch and, Col Stitch and Colors, and I'll put her details down below, actually makes these floss drops on her 3D printer. Now, I know that people have said, oh, yeah, we've seen them all before, blah, blah, blah. Well, Jessica's been very clever to be able to print these on her 3D printer with the DMC numbers on it. So I'm still trying to create my master set, which is why there's some without it. And... So I've got a full set of those that I purchased from her. And I also asked her to print out these end codes so that when I hang them up on my when I hang them up on the hook here, I can actually just clearly see from the front that these are the 3800s. Um so which is actually really cool. I'm pretty excited to actually have them all looking lovely and being able to hang them on the wall. So that was another purchase. That I probably shouldn't done, shouldn't have done. Um, at the retreat, these are not purchases; these are off the freebie table. I did get a ribbon and rose stitchery, a floral heart embroidery design. Now I do want to actually try some embroidery. And this, let's see if I can cut my face off. This is, this is actually really beautiful. It's just ribbon rose, a uh, ribbon embroidery, I believe. So I do want to try. I do want to give that a try, see how that goes, who knows whether I succeed or I don't, but like that last cross stitch said, just get up and do it again. Um, and the Moo Fay Main is, um, this is one that I got off the freebie table, now this would have been a kit previously, but it's just the pattern, but I really love the colours in this. In their designs, I really like the designs. A lazy Susan Summer, Carolyn Menning, and it is just some daisies, 
It's got two little buttons to put in the middle of the flowers. And it's got a couple of bees in there. Nice simple design. Autumn Lane Stitchery I absolutely love. Um, and those who follow me for quite some time know that I have the majority of their patterns. This trick or treat was actually in the freebie pile. Now I'm not 100% sure whether I own the PDF of this. And if I do, this will become a giveaway in the coming um, floss tubes. There's no use holding on to the original if I've got a PDF copy. And um, the drawn thread, which is Merry Christmas. Same situation. I think I do own this already. Um, I went and got this on the second day, near the end of the day, and it was still there. So I thought, okay, well, if nobody really wants it, then I will take it. And if um, if I do happen to have it, because I'm pretty sure I've seen it before, but I don't know whether I've seen it before someone else stitching or whether I've actually owned the pattern. So I will double check that. And if I do have it, then I will pass it along. Um, and a Janlin kit, which is all fully kitted with the fabric and the floss. And that is this one here, which is called Lion. Which is quite cool with the blue. And that's stitched on the navy. Okay. Now, I, at the retreat, we also had... Um, we got given... When I was at Art and Frame, they gave us, for every purchase that you've purchased, because one purchase, those are not whole, they gave us a DMC box, which is just a little wooden one. It comes with some floss in there, DMC floss, some DMC needles, and these are all random. Some people got these, some people didn't. But a little Rendale key ring, um, which is actually quite cute. I do actually have one of these might be outside actually next to my stitching chair um, I do have one that I was given last time I ordered from her but which is really cool and then with the one from the retreat we actually got another one with it but it also had some a little piece of Ada or whatever stitch color stitch um, fabric that we use so that was pretty cool Now, my colleague at work obviously knows that I like frogs and she purchased this for me with a little little card that she made just to say thank you and it just says, just a little something to say thank you for being awesome, which I thought was really cute. And she purchased this little frog. I think it was from Timu, but it's quite heavy. It's just this little frog doing zen Pose, just sitting there with his hands on his knees it's pretty cute so that's going to go over on my little frog my little frog wall so I just kicked my toe um, which is really cool now for some exciting news another gift that I got given was from Kirsten and Kimberly is this gorgeous gorgeous project bag of a, it's got frog fabric on there and there which is really cool and it has a little frog pin which is hard to see because of the glare sorry um let's see if i can get that out now kirsten and kimberly purchased this for me apparently 12 months ago and when they went to a retreat but just didn't have a chance to send it to me so here's a cute little pin frog which i think is going to look amazing in my biscornu that's got a frog on it so that is awesome can't believe that i'm going to do that um i got another beautiful frog card from diana which is awesome and a nice message on the inside about how she's been and things now about three or four weeks ago I had a message from one of my viewers called Susan and she asked whether she could send me something um, and I said to her 
that would be lovely. Um, it's not expected, but it will definitely be appreciated, um, not knowing what she was going to send. So then that was about four weeks ago, maybe. And then two weeks ago, I got a message from her saying that the parcel's on its way. Here's your tracking number. And so I eagerly waited the postman and it got delivered to my work while I was at retreat and it arrived on Monday. So it was this massive big cardboard box and I'm like, oh my gosh, what has she sent me? So I opened it up to find this gorgeous honey bee box that has got like a, it's got the magnet here. And when I opened it, I will put a couple of photos here to show you how it was when I opened it. So obviously I've opened it and I've unwrapped everything. But everything inside was individually wrapped in a beautiful yellow bee wrapping paper, like tissue paper, wrapped in ribbon. Oh, it was so beautiful. So I'll pop some photos up here so you can see how beautiful it was. Now I'm going to show you what was in the bag. So if, if it wasn't enough that I got given the box itself, I'm going to spill everything that I've got on the seat here. Just make a little bit of room. Oops. So, let's start from the top. I received some magnet fabric holders the, that you put on your fabric to hold all your excess fabric. Now, these are so strong. It was really hard for me to try to break them apart to actually even give it a go what to see what they show or to show my girlfriend at work what they were for because she looked at them and like what's that for um so I had some of them which I wanted to try these but had never known where to purchase them from so which was actually really cool to get some some needle minders which is Mary Poppins which is awesome because I love Mary Poppins some fabric from Grace Notes Fabrics, which is the first time I've actually ever used their fabric, and it feels beautiful, which is an Ada, an Ada and Count Ada, which is my favourite fabric, and it is a, what well, doesn't really show up on this because of the time of day probably, but it's a, a darker beige model fabric, absolutely beautiful, I'm pretty sure a Mary Poppins design will look amazing on there. project bag and a little companion bag like little purse um, notions bag with dragonflies I have taken those out already but I won't take them out because of the crinkle a pattern from art to heart which is mischievous monster and it's actually got a little that's the monster which reminds me of monster ink and it's got a little frog Gosh, a little frog to go in up on this bit on its tongue. A double sided seam ripper, which is really cool. I was so overwhelmed when I opened up this box, I couldn't talk. And for those that have been watching me for a long time, it's not very often that I'm actually short of a few words, um, but I was just, uh, had me crying at one stage because I was just so overwhelmed with everything. Um, Mill Hill Down Under um, little ornament kits. So the Kangaroo Santa, the Kiwi Santa, and the Koala Santa. The three of those. Another project bag, which is really cool because it's got all like the school things on there, which I thought would be even amazing for Finley to have as his book bag for when he goes to school. These are Garen Toten bags um, and a little Notion bag to go with it. Exciting, hey? It's actually really exciting. Um, a pair of scissors.
all these beautiful colored floss there's a twirl in here there's dmc there's some um, gloriana silks which i've never used before um i'm just so overwhelmed with the the generosity that she's actually sent is just amazing um a beautiful card with some lovely writing in there um and now this is my favorite thing i love this whole box but this is my favorite thing out of the box so this is one of so a beautiful little honey needle minder um it's got like if i can try to get it to focus but it's a glass blown bee on that honeycomb and this oh my gosh i am so excited It is a little glass blown frog needle minder. I'll try to put a photo up here because it's really hard to get it on the camera of how, how gorgeous it is. I did take a photo that was beautiful. I love this. I think this is absolutely amazing. Beautiful. So all I can say to Susan, Kirsten, Kimberly, Susan at work that purchased the um, little frog for me. Everybody that's actually sent me things. I am honestly touched that you've taken the time out to send me something out of and you've used your own hard-earned cash to actually purchase something and then send it here. I know it's not cheap to actually send things here to New Zealand um, and I truly do appreciate it. If there's anything that I can do to try to repay your generosity then please put your hand up and um, let me know because I I definitely feel very spoiled um, with everything that I've received and I it is like I mentioned it's definitely not expected um, but it's greatly appreciated so thank you very much for the gift of everything that you've given I'm super super excited um, now I just wanted to share a couple of projects that I'd sorry patterns that I just purchased today which of course I won't be able to show you because I put back on the shelf so I was watching a floss tuber um, a few weeks ago and I mentioned her on my last floss tube which was let me just make sure I have the name properly it was for tartan and threads. Gosh, now I've forgotten what her first name is. Um, sorry, let me just double check. Katrina, thank you. It was in my book, thinking in my book. Um, she had actually had a Wizard of Oz pattern that she was just about to restart because she wasn't happy with the um, the fabric or how she had actually started it and at the time when she started it she wasn't 100 percent sure that you're supposed to actually cross the crosses the, the same way and things like that it's from the little stitcher so of course i went hunting for the wizard of oz pattern and i found it it's an etsy shop and this is the name just here if you can see that the little stitcher um, it's the wizard of oz one and what comes with other fairy tales that go with Wizard of Oz? Alice in Wonderland. So I have another project um, to add to my Alice in Wonderland projects. And the third thing, believe it or not, Mary Poppins. So another cool design that I can add to my list. Now the Alice in Wonderland one that I had actually showed, I started in the blue um, earlier they do have three um, three different ones in the same sort of design same size from different people surprisingly but they also have this Alice in Wonderland this is from Lena Ova so L-I-N-A-O-V-A -A on Etsy and so this is the same size as my other one so I'm going to try to do this I've got one that's in orange that one that's in blue and I might do this one in a red or a 
I don't know. Um, maybe green. I don't know. I'll find out when I get there. But that's actually really cool. So that is all of my stash, my projects. A couple more floss tubers that I'd like to actually shout out. Um, which I've been watching quite a bit lately. Um, when I got home, my husband and I had, um, and I'll say that in actually the the update, uh, the life update, so I don't bore anybody. Um, floss tube shout outs, and I will put obviously all the details down below. Um, Tara and Bailey at A Stitch in Time. Um, I really loved what they were working on. They're such a, a nice... Um, they have such a lovely relationship between the two of them. So go and check them out and give them some love. Lauren and Kayla is stitching with my Littley. And again, I'll put the details down below. Nikki at Nick's Days. Um, her and Katrina are very good friends, I believe. Um, and I can totally see that because they're very similar with their personalities. Um, Narelle is simply Narelle Stitches. I watched her last night. Um, actually, it was earlier this morning when I couldn't go to sleep. And Corinne at Naughty Nautilus. Um, she's a marine bio biologist and she loves cats. Um, she has quite a few quirky projects, I would say. Um, she was lovely to listen to when I had her obviously playing on my tablet while stitching and yeah it was actually quite um it was quite relaxing having her on the uh, floss tube um carly from the 60 minute stitcher was actually um really cool i actually watched and i could see some of her projects would possibly come my way so i've made a couple of notes of a few that i i like of hers and the last one I watched earlier this morning was Cecilia, and her channel name is the same, Cecilia. So she likes to be called Cece, and she has some lovely projects as well. So I will list all them down below to show you who I've been watching lately, and um, we will go from there. So now I'm just going to give you a little bit of a life update, so if you don't want to hang around for the life update... Um, I appreciate you coming along. Thank you very much. If you like what you see and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the bell and um, subscribe and hit the bell so that you know when I put up my next floss tube. If you've got any questions or anything that you'd like to actually comment about, good or bad, I'm happy to take positive or negative comments. Um, constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, just pop the details down below. Otherwise, my email address and the way that you can contact me is down below as well. So, um, for my life update. So, March the 5th and March the 8th are two days, um, my two grandchildren's birthdays, two of the grandchildren that I have. Um, so, Finley's birthday, sorry, Amelia's birthday is the 5th of March and she was two years old. Um we did get to pop over and see her a little bit before her birthday. We weren't able to see her for her birthday, so her present's still sitting out on my table. Um, and I will go and hopefully catch up with her um, this weekend, if not the next weekend, because she's going to come over for a barbecue with us for Easter. Um, and I'll pop a photo up here of the last time I seen her. So she has, it's really hard to actually catch her with a smile on her face. So it comes and goes and it's really quick and you've got to be quick with the camera and I'm never ever quick. But she's a gorgeous little girl and she's getting to know us more and more each time we go there, which is actually really cool. And I love it for my husband because it's his son, uh, my stepson, um, it's his son's daughter that um, is Amelia. And we we don't really have too much to do with them because they lead such busy lives. So when we get the chance to actually see them, we really do appreciate and love the fact that we can get in, get in there and rumble with her. So I've popped a couple of photos of her. Little Finley has turned one on the 8th of February. Uh, sorry, 8th of March. And I will pop a 
photo up here of from his birthday. If you follow me on um, Facebook, you would have seen my um, seen my cover photo at the back with him with his little birthday balloons. Um, but I will also pop a video up here of he thought it was really funny when Cherie had cut, my daughter had actually cut the cheesecake and it was on a spatula. He thought it was really funny that he could grab the spatula, the cheesecake off the spatula and turn around and feed his dad. So I won't spoil it anymore, but I'll pop that video up here for you to actually have a look at and have a giggle because we were all laughing um, the way that he just wanted to keep doing it over and over and over. Um, he's actually been unwell the last few days with what we believe is tonsillitis. Um, and for a one-year-old, it's not easy to communicate with what's going on and how bad he felt so he just wanted extra cuddles from mum and dad um so that was lucky for Cherie that she did get those cuddles in um all good things or can sometimes come with bad things so on Finley's birthday unfortunately I lost my uncle um in Australia he um he was doing well 85 years old I believe um and the oldest obviously in our in our hierarchy he went home from Boxing Day last year from the family get-together and was rushed to hospital. They believe he had an aneurysm um, and they didn't know whether it was the a stroke or what it was, but he spent the from Boxing Day right through to the 8th when he passed. He spent that time in hospital um, getting weaker and not being able to communicate and things like that and he lost his life on the 8th of um, March, which is going to be a bittersweet sort of um, day for Finley's birthday and for, for my uncle. Now, I didn't really have a huge amount to do with him. They were, it's a little bit hard to explain, but I'm a real down to worth. I would try to get along with everybody and um, unfortunately, they they were on the upper side of or the upper class of people or thought they were upper class. Um, so they looked down at the people like myself, having children out of being married and things like that. So it was never, ever um, a real close relationship. But he was my mum's brother and I'm pretty sure my mum will be really happy that... Um, He's now up there sharing it with her and my grandmother. So, sorry, don't even know why I'm getting emotional now. Um, yeah, so the 8th of March is going to be a, a sort of a remembering day for me to look at the happiness as well as the sadness. So his funeral's tomorrow. I can't get across to Australia to go um, mainly because it's like $900 return and we are going over in April, so... Um, it's not something that's feasible right at this point of time but I've sent my love and some flowers so hopefully um, that will be well appreciated um, Billy my oldest grandson that I'm sure you've all seen before on my channel um, he turned seven on the 27th of March so I will make sure I share some photos of him in my next video um, I will show you a couple here um, of the last time he was here with Finley, and I'm pretty sure I posted him on the last video, but just in case, he, um, I don't get to speak to him very often because his mum is definitely the, um, is the kind of lady that keeps him all to herself and I do have to fight for time with him, but hopefully I'll be able to give him a call on his birthday and she'll answer the phone for me to speak to him, um, which will be really cool. Um, other than that, work is actually going re really good. It's really busy at the moment. Um, when I got back from my retreat on Monday, I actually took Tuesday off as well to make sure that I could sit back and relax and not have to rush back to work, which was really good because it meant I have a day stitching. Well, as the days went on, I went back to work on the Wednesday. It was busy. Thursday, Friday, busy. Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, yesterday... My husband went and done some work for one of our friends and, um, or one of my friends and he helped her out because her, she lost her husband, um, this time last year. So she needed, he needed to give her a hand with something around the house. 
um, I feel like he's like a dollar hubby or renter hubby or something like that because he always goes out and helps people. Um, so we went out early yesterday morning and he helped her with a few things. We were there for four hours and when we come home it was like, oh, I'm so tired because I went to bed late Friday and Saturday nights. Um, so I had a nap, I went to sleep and all of a sudden it was four hours later. Um, that was a really long nap. Well, the problem with that is then last night I didn't actually feel like going to sleep. So I am, it's like eight o'clock now and I'm still awake from probably about six o'clock yesterday afternoon or last night. So I'm a little bit wired and I feel like I'm, I've got ADHD and I'm running on adrenaline because I know that as soon as I sit down, um, I'm going to want to go to sleep. So I've got a video chat tonight, a Zoom chat, um, that I do want to actually try to stay awake for. And that's just the Kiwi one. I will have, um, probably in April, early April, I will have a Zoom chat for my Floss Tube channel. And hopefully everybody can come along. I'll try to put the video link up um, as soon as I can so that people have plenty of notice to actually try to fit, fit around um, the Zoom. So... Okay, I think I've chatted for long enough. That's probably an hour 15 or something that I've been chatting for. So I just want to say again, thank you so much for everybody that's come along and subscribed. Um, appreciate your comments and I definitely appreciate the gifts that you've sent to me. Um, blown away that I've been gifted with so many lovely things. Um, and yeah. I just, I will treasure them and make sure that they're well loved um, and kept for as long as I can definitely keep for. But um, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you coming along. Hopefully you've got um, lots of stitching in while you've been listening to me ramble on. And I look forward to sharing, um, to sharing some progress photos in my Facebook group. If you don't have, uh, if you haven't entered yet, just jump on the links down below. You will need to just ask a couple of questions. And of course, if you ask the questions, you'll automatically be entered, you'll enter in. Um, I have actually put a post out today on my Floss Tube channel for a friend of mine called Barbara. She is an older lady that lives over in Philadelphia. She has a quite a huge stash of patterns. And I have purchased from her before myself. Um... She lost her husband, I think it's coming up two years now, and she's trying to um, declutter her craft room so that she can then sell her current house and move into something smaller that's going to be able to help her get around because she's got sore knees and she's got a few medical conditions that actually stops her from doing a lot of things. So if you feel like, um, if you need any patterns or she has some Mirabellia patterns that she's selling at the moment she does have a lot of other stuff that she'll load as she can do that um she is in philadelphia like i said so she's in a different time zone to myself um but the link is in the floss the facebook channel uh fl facebook group for my channel so if you want to actually jump on in and see what she's got to she's got to sell then please jump in there and help her de stash so that she can sell her property and buy a new one that's going to be a little bit more manageable for her so okay I've said I was going to go already and I just kept rambling on for a few more minutes so I'm definitely going to go now thank you so much for coming along um I look forward to chatting with you on the on the zoom and seeing the upgrade updated photos for you I'll get this edited and up and I'll catch up with you guys later thank you very much take care happy stitching bye bye